Welcome back, Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program students. In today's screencast, we're going to learn to construct some objects, and we're going to use the grouping idea on that. But we're also going to learn some fun things of how to put answers on our smart board, but hide them so students can't see them until we want them to be seen. And then they'll be revealed in a fancy, showy way that always catches kids' attention uh, when we use these techniques. So let's start by going to a new page. We know how to do that now. I'm going to give my students a math problem involving the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, here's a problem I want them to be able to do. To find the missing side, find the third side when I provide them with two sides of a triangle that's a right triangle and they could use the Pythagorean theorem on. So I need to construct some triangles. Now I could just go up and use the tool here to construct triangles, but I'm, I'm not going to do that because these triangles are just too regular. I want to construct some right triangles that don't look like these two. So I'll use the line tool. I'll hold my shift key down and construct a vertical line. I'll hold my shift key down to construct a horizontal line. And then I'll connect the two with a third line. So I have a triangle. I want to indicate that the right angle is here. So again, I'll use the shift technique to do a horizontal line, the shift technique to do a vertical line. And now I have a right triangle. I'm going to use the arrow tool. I'm going to draw a box around all of these and then just pick any one of the drop downs and say group. Group them together. Now they'll behave as one. So if I move it, it all moves at one time. If I make it larger, it all gets larger. Let's clone that. With the clone tool, let's spin it, and let's make this one larger. So now I have a different looking triangle over here that I'll be asking students to find the third side on. Let's clone it another time for a third problem. So I'll spin it. Maybe this time I'll put the right angle on top. And I'll change its size as well. Maybe I'll make it a little bit larger as well. So now we have three different triangles on our screen. And now I want to supply the, the sides. I'm going to go ahead and put all sides up. So I'll just click on the text tool. And maybe this one has side length 6. Maybe this side down here is 8. I'm just double clicking. And according to the Pythagorean theorem, this would have side length 10. Down here... As a different example, if this one's 5 and this one's 12, then by the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse has got to be 13. And likewise, for my third example, I'm going to click up here, and I'm going to use a 7, 24, 25 example. Now, math teachers probably remember that these are called Pythagorean triples because 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared and so forth. So these are special cases of problems that I want to give to my students. Only I've got all three sides indicated. I want to hide the third side and have them figure out what it is. So to do that, I'm going to show you three different techniques. Uh, one technique is simply to cover up the answer with a graphic. So if I go to my tools, I might pick the heart shape and draw a heart that covers up one of the answers. As another example, I might pick um, the star or I could pick even a rectangle. It doesn't matter. Maybe I'll pick the star. I'll draw a star. This time I think I'll cover up the 12 because I don't want all of the uh, problems to be alike. In some case, I want to not tell them what the hypotenuse is, but tell them what the other two sides are. In some cases, I don't want to tell them the hypotenuse, but tell them what the two sides are, and so forth. So let me cover up one of my answers on the third one as well. How about if I go to my shapes, and this time I'll just pick a rectangle, and I'll draw a rectangle around, uh, how about the seven? Oops, it's not filled in, is it? So what I need to do is go to my paint bucket, Pick a color, fill it in, and now 
that answer is covered up. So now all a student would do is come up to the board with his finger. He could drag away the correct answer and reveal the answer that's below, which is what we want him to do. Drag this away and it reveals the correct answer. We can make this a little fancier. We use the technique of not just drawing a shape on them, but clicking on the shape, going to Properties under the drop-down menu, and choosing Object Animation. I want this object to fly off the screen when I touch it. So I'm going to choose under Type, Fly Out. Let's try it with a different one. Let's try it with the star. I click on the star. I come to Properties, Object Animation, and this one I would like for it to fly out as well. This one I want to fade out, so I'll click on Fade Out. Okay, so now when a student comes to the board, all he does is to tap on the heart and it flies away. He taps on the star, it flies away. He taps on the box, and it fades out. Okay, here's another technique we'll use to hide our answers and then reveal them when we want to. And this one's sort of fun. What I'm going to do is I notice that my background is white. So I'm going to go up and grab a pen. I'm going to grab just a regular pen this time. So I'm just grabbing a regular pen. I will come down to the Properties screen, though. And I think I'll make it a little thicker than usual. I'll pick that pen. And I'm going to pick Color White. So now all I'm going to do is to take my pen and cover up the answer with white ink. I'll cover up the 7. I'll cover up the 12. Now, when a student wants to see the answers of all things, they're going to use the eraser. So I'll pick the eraser tool. I'll come down on my board and simply erase. And lo and behold... There's the answer. Let's use my eraser down here, and there it is. And my eraser over here, and that covers up, um, that erases and reveals the 7. So this is a cool technique. Again, just use your regular pen, pick a thick pen, and make sure you're using the same background color as your screen, which in my case is white. So I covered up the numbers with a white pen, and then use the eraser to reveal them. Students always like that technique. The third and final technique I'm going to show you of how to reveal answers uh, isn't so much reveal answers as it is present them but then take them away. So to do that let's take away three of our answers. Let's take away this answer here by just clicking on the delete key. Let's hide the 12 by just hitting the delete key and I'll hide the 7. What we're going to do this time is we're going to use the magic pen. We've used the magic pen for other things but not for writing answers. So I'm going to click on pens. I'm going to come to magic pen. And at this point, when the student just takes his finger and writes the answer on the board, 10, down here he puts the right answer 12, and up here he puts the right answer of 7. Watch what happens to these answers. They disappear over time. In just a couple of seconds, the answers completely disappear. And that way, if you use a magic pen, you don't have to continually take away work that students have done for the next class or for the next student. When you write anything with a magic pen and wait a few seconds, it goes away. So you've seen three techniques today of how to hide answers. Cover them up with an object and then just use your finger to slide the object aside. Animate them so that when you touch them, they fly off the screen or use the magic pen, which will show an answer for a few seconds, and then it goes away. Hope this has been fun for you, and I hope you have a good time constructing activities for students that use these techniques. See you next time.